All right, so it's been a few days, guys. Um, we have not put a video up. We're still working on the M3 periodically, amongst a lot of other things, which I'll show you here in a little bit. So we got the seats done, you've seen the last video. Um, we we're covering the headliner and all the pillars. We'll get Philip to follow us, we'll let him go first. So don't trip over nothing. And over on the hood of the 1600, we have all, almost all of the stuff covered. We were missing one C pillar. And we're missing a C pillar because we ran out of material. All right, sweet. We got one tiny little wrinkle there. And there's a lot of tips and tricks to that. It's hard to film this kind of stuff because I had to stop right in the middle of it and go get other things. And so basically how these work and operate is you use the spray glue, the three and spray adhesive, the headliner stuff. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, there's a certain kind that does all the material, puts all the material on. So then around the edges, you have to use contact adhesive with a little paintbrush to make sure all the edges stick. Actually, this one didn't need it. And then anything with a bend in it, like this, all has to be contact adhesive. Because if you don't do that, even if it does stick right now, as soon as it gets hot outside, it won't stick, right? So you need something that's not really subject to heat or humidity, and that's what you have to do. Um, other than that, we'll go back over here. This place is totally, totally trashed. And we have some buffer stuff out. We'll talk about that here in one second. Um, it's sitting here kind of ready to put back together. We need to shampoo the carpet. Now, then all the seats and the headliner can all go back in. It's really not that big of a deal to do this, uh, but this will be a very, very nice car when this is all done. And that brings you back to this. We're trying to find some more E36 M3s, and holy crap, a couple years ago, you could buy one for 3,500 bucks. Five grand was like super nice. When we snagged this one, we got it for a decent price, and now everything's like 14 grand and up, 14 to 20. Those are not for real nice examples either. Those are for like okay examples. That still need interior work, that still needs some paint work. Uh, and then the, the junkyard special, right now you gotta pay seven grand for, something that needs to be in the junkyard. And you see a lot of those have been looking. Uh, also, leave in the comments here, I've been thinking about buying an E30, and I found one and we didn't jump on it and now it's gone. But I'd like to do an interior, a new leather package of stuff on a E30. That's what I'm thinking about next where you could buy all the OEM leathers for it, front and rear seats and make the car just mint perfect. The one thing about the E30 market, I'm not a big E30 fan, but there is a market for them and it's a little bit unclear what to use or what, what the price is. Like you have what people are asking, but then what's the, what are they actually getting? And I don't know, is it worth it to have, go buy an E30, do the leather kit, have let's say four or five grand in it. Is it worth seven or eight or 10? Depends on the spec, if it has sport seats, if it don't, if it's two doors, four doors, convertible. There's a lot of variables to it, but there's a little bit of traction to want to do one of those. The other thing is, um, actually a couple more things. We've been doing the G-Wagon pieces. The G-Wagon, we're not gonna show you now because all the parts aren't on it. We got the buffer and stuff out here. We have one of the side skirts. Chad painted all the, the side skirts for us, all the fenders. Not really a fender. And this one has one pass of the buffer. Still got a couple little sand scratches in it, but it's like really good. That is gonna be an awesome vehicle. We're doing the Brabus kit on that. So stay tuned for all that. I had not planned to do the fenders for the Brabus, the wide body side pieces. We might do those. Um, I'm undecided because you have to use a pretty big wheel spacer to make that work. And I don't want to do that on that vehicle. I feel like it's going to be super dangerous. And there is that. Um, so that'll be coming next two or three days. I'll video up of that, maybe by Friday, maybe. Um, and let me see, what else? Oh, yes. We'll go outside for the next piece. Okay, so the next thing is I actually bought a new car hauler. All right. And Phillip's leaning against the old one here. We'll show you that here in one second. So this is a challenge or ironworks challenger 20 foot it's not the exact spec that i wanted but these things are so hard to buy right now it's the spec we got and we didn't really too caring about the split tail in the back um but it is what it is and that was a little more expensive option 
this was only four or this is only two and a half hours from my house um all the rest of them are eight plus hours eight nine hours away and we have our old trailer here as soon as philip gets done those are pull-out ramps by the way every old man is like ooh, ooh. this is our old trailer this is a, a wooden floor 18 foot and we noticed with this one the 18 foot's not quite big enough for a lot of bigger cars and a lot of you're saying okay okay fatty there's a 540 on your trailer what's the deal with that well the deal with that is uh the guy we sold the m5 to this is his car so without having to say it you all know what's wrong with this car it's a 540 four four liter v8 you know the timing chain guides are destroyed in it they were destroyed in it so he went through and did the job himself i have to very much commend him he actually got it done there's no check engine light for timing over advanced but he does have a couple oil leaks and I do want to check a few things on it to make sure it has everything done correctly on it. And there is a coolant line that's got a crack in it, some little stuff. So I've been kind of waiting to get the M3 back together a little more. And we're going to bring this in the shop, put it on the lift. And we'll make some videos on this. This will make a lot of you X5 guys happy. Land Rover, Range Rover with the 4.4, 540, 740s. You guys have been nagging me for a long time to do videos on this. That's the only reason why I agreed to this for you guys. So stay tuned. There will be videos out on this. And like I said, the old trailer is already sold. We actually did some trading with Chad at the body shop. And in turn, he is going to paint our Scion and the rest of the G-Wagon where we had that flat black on the hood and the top. And then whenever parts, other parts of the Bravis kit we want to add to that. And that works out good for me, works out good for him. So don't email me wanting to buy this trailer. It's already pre-sold before it even got before it even got replaced what's going on in the porsche world uh we have not posted a video on that channel in a while time slipping away from us we got to get on that uh what we did get was some catalytic converters for it and just for the simple reason i cannot stand the stank from that car you know sitting over here in the middle of the shop if we start that thing up it smells like a lawnmower like real rich nasty unburnt fuel on cold start and no matter how fast we start up and pull it out, it just fills the whole place full of fumes. So we had to do that. We got as short as long as we could. We're gonna have Howard Wellers up for us this coming week, probably next week, this week's pretty busy, and all that business. So you guys wonder what's been going on? That's what's been going on. Not to mention everything else in life. It just takes a lot of time between all your yard work here and everything else. And, um, you know, life appointments, doctor's appointments, or sex change and stuff like that. And, uh, but no, really, that's it. The M3, the used E36 M3 market is done. We were managed to snag one before it went through the roof. And now it's through the roof, boys. Uh, I do regret not being able to buy any more, but this is what it is, right? So if you guys have E36 M3 and it's not totally just destroyed and something we could fix and not spend $10 million on, uh, and it's not rusty, let me know in the comments if you have any M car at all, actually, that needs some work and you just get sick of messing with it and you want a respectable price for it, let us know. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all later.